Hi, everybody. My name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and we are going to try... Dash. It is a day he wants us to spend with him. It is a day he wants us to basically be his people more than any other day of the week. He wants us to be close to him on this day. Yeah, absolutely. And so here we are, and we are going to go over some of the laws, statutes, and commands. And this is kind of like the old days in the Levitical times, back when the, the, you had the priests, and the priests would have to read the Torah before we do this. But let's just open a prayer real quick, and um, I will pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another Shabbat. We thank you for a day of rest. We thank you for your son, Yahushua. We thank you for your Torah. We thank you for everything. You have given us a life. You have given us just an abundance of blessings in our lives and father we are in your debt we will always be in your debt we are your people we are seeking your ways we are seeking your laws and we are seeking your kingdom father please please note the people that are here please understand that we are with you that we are truly your people and that we are searching out your ways father please bless this day bless those who are listening help us to get rest on this day and we thank you for everything and father we again we thank you for your son yahushua we ask this in the name of yahushua amen all right, so let's take a quick look and let's go into this real quick. And what I want to do is I want to go through um, some of these, and we um, we we've I guess there's no reason not to review these. And since nobody can be over there, Jade, let's see if you can represent for the family and give me the first ten laws. All right, here right, we go. Be fruitful. Got it. Multiply. Yep. Replenish the earth. Yep. Oh. We always get stuck here. Oh, yeah, that's the first three I can get the four. Oh, Sub doing have dominion over it. There you go. Okay. Uh, the, all the herb and tree bearing fruit is food for you. Got it. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for commandment six. Bear, no, this is a. Uh... Can, I, can I do this? Can I do this? Uh, is it cheating? I don't know. What do you got? Man, Man and, and woman, woman should build yeah. their own families. Okay, seven. Master it sin. Is master sin. Eight is every cling moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Don't eat the blood. Now, when we look at don't eat the blood, we look, there's a ton of commandments in there, right? And so we have Genesis 9, 4, then we have Leviticus 3, 17, Leviticus 7, 26, Leviticus 17, 10, Leviticus 17, 12, and Leviticus 7, 13 and 14, and Leviticus 19, 26. So we don't know if there was a tremendous amount of problem with people drinking the blood, but there is a lot of commandments here and it. Um, you know, there it's obviously something that we should not do, and so it's it's very important. Number ten is walk before me and be perfect. Um, that, and that's that's a hard thing to do when we are dealing with our Creator, who is holy, righteous, um, and everything of that sort. And so, it's a big it's a big task for us. Um, commandment eleven is another one that has a ton of verses with it. Guard Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. And inside of that, we have Genesis, Exodus. And it just, it continues on. See how many times later it says, Therefore shall ye guard my commandments and do them, for I am Yahuwah. All right, commandment 12, every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Commandment 13, teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. 14, Yahuwah's name for all generations. Commandment 15 is Passover. There's a ton of sub commands that we need to do as far as as we get into those times, we will go over these more in. There's definitely 16 leavened bread. Now, I get this, guys. I get that it says your internet is a little shaky. Um, is, do you guys get that a lot? Yeah. yeah. It happens a few times. It happens a lot. So, But it seems, it seems to go fine. For the most part. All right. Commandment 16. 17 is the Torah for the stranger and the Ibrahim. Commandment 18. Firstborn to Yahuwah. He ones before Yah. I bring Yah's name to not. Just keep this. And on here, uh, right here. Um, what do we? What? Um, give me some le rules of the Sabbath. We've gone over this before. No work. No cooking. Yep. No kindling fire. Yep. No buying or selling. Yep. Um, no, your animals can't work. Right. No servants, made male servants work. Right. Yeah. So it's a day. It's a complete day of rest. And so here we are. And so we are on this. And we are reading the law statutes and commands of our Creator. Uh, Twenty-two is my favorite one. What would that be, Eli? Honor your parents. Oh yeah. Why is that my favorite one, Eli? 
Uh, because you like on, you like dishonor you? I do. I don't like to go out thinking I'm dishonored. Okay, do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. Do not oppress the fatherless or widow. Do not eat what is torn of the beast. And this one also has um, a sub-commandment there. I need to space that one out right there. Commandment 32 is no false report. 33 is do not follow multitude of evil. Jade, why wouldn't we want to follow a multitude of evil? Uh, because one, they're wicked and Torahless, and if you're with those people, you are a acting as them. You are hanging out with the Torahless, and you will look as Torahless as well. Yeah, you will become. You will become your friends. What your friends are is what you will become. All right. Uh, don't judge unrighteous against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Why wouldn't we want to take a bribe, anyone? It perverts judgment. If something needs to be judged correctly and you take a bribe, you have just become part of the crime. You become part of the problem as well. You get owned. You become a slave. Whoever t ends up taking a bribe is a slave to the bribe master. Yeah, because you, you, are, you will by default change the way that you would actually um, do your stuff, right? You're going to give favors to the guy that gave you the bribes because that's, you know, he, he hooked you up. Okay, don't oppress a stranger. And then another one of that is love the stranger. Lots about loving the stranger and lots about loving your neighbor. Give your land rest in the seventh year. And we're also going to talk about that. So commandment 40, Nicole, will be um, one that we will be adding to today. Right. Commandment 41 is do not mention any pagan names. Keep the Feast of Yahuwah. And under the Feast of Yahuwah, there's stuff in there, right? And so we have, we've gone over that. Passover. Passover, uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Shavuot. Um, we've gone over the uh, Day of Atonement and the Day of Blasting. Oh, we missed and one. Sukkot. Yeah, we, it's in Sukkot. We still missed one. Oh, uh, so we have Passover? Well, so that, what, what is a fe what is feast? Feast of Weeks. What, right? what is a feast? Sabbath day. Sabbath day, yeah, Sabbath day. That is it, remember? We just read that last time. Okay, 43. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Only. Or outsiders of the land. Do not put oil on a normal person. What are we talking about here? A priestly, almost like perfume that they made, where they made all these spices together and they would like spread it on themselves, and the priest would. And if you were to make it, you would be cursed. Yeah, and once it's on you, right, you're basically set apart, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we, we read that, that you're not able to touch the dead and various things like that if you are um, if you are ordained. You have that, that priestly anointment on. Make or use this perfume on a normal person. Um, and then it goes into uh, a perfume. The fat. Over and over, right? Do not eat the fat. Whatever is in fat, Yah likes it. It's his, and we should keep his. His. All right. Fifty one. Re Obey Yah. Uh, who is high? Working on, and it's 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 a little bit of computer time. She's got to type these all out and get them correctly. And then Yahoo's hygiene laws are very important as well. So you don't. 54. Five, no sacrifice. Do not uncover your family. Do not take your woman's sister. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice Moloch. Why, why wouldn't we do this, anyone? Uh, because because it's, it's an idol. It's a satanic thing. We shouldn't be killing our children. Yeah, we should be multiplying. We shouldn't be, um, you know, killing off our kids. Um, I don't have the, the, the right title for this yet. For right now, it's do not be gay. Um, it's, it's man and woman. That's the bottom line. 61, do not lie with beast. Obviously, that's some sort of horrible abomination. Be holy. And that's a that's a big one, and we we struggle with that. Um, I think I think every, I think we all, I think everybody probably struggles with this when we are compared to Yah. If we are compared to the way and the cleanness and the way that Yah is, we all will completely fall short. And it, it doesn't matter how wonderful we think that we are, 
when we are comparing ourselves to the, the Almighty, we're, we're going to fall short. Commandment 63, do not reap the corners of your field or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Um, that seems pretty obvious, but maybe, Eli, you can tell me why wouldn't we defraud our neighbor? Why wouldn't we want to mess with our neighbor? Um, because Well, that's because Yahweh has told us to. And if we're messing with a stranger, we are strangers to the land of Mitzrayim. That was one of the things that he told us to do. Yeah, but what's what's the bottom line? If we are sitting here oppressing a stranger, what will they never receive from us? They will never receive the good news from of Yahushua the or Yahuwah. Yeah, the good news. Yeah, the Messiah Yahushua. And, you know, if you're if you're some evil person and you, you act, you know, somebody has something like your neighbor and they do something evil or vicious to you and you react to that, um, you're never, ever going to give them a chance. They're, they're not going to want to listen to you, man, because they, they understand who you are. And so you have to repay kindness for evil. And, you know, hopefully that will pave the way that you can minister and, and talk to, to your neighbors and things. Okay. Pay your workers for the day's wage. They are due. Do not harm the disabled. This sounds like a very basic thing. Um, why, why would this even be a command? I don't know. But they maybe they were messing with the disabled. Uh, maybe something Yahoo saw them doing. It's like that doesn't look very good to me. Maybe some bad kids or something. I don't know. Possibly. All right. Do not be a liar. Very very important. Um, you know, and you know, lying leads to to everything else. Lying is a gateway to every other sin. I mean, if you're engaged in other kinds of sin, it usually begins with a lie, and whatever you're covering up, it's just it's it's terrible. Great. Do not endanger your neighbor. Um, Cade. Why Possibly get him killed. That would be your fault if you and killed your neighbor. Yeah. Do not hate your brother. Jaden, why is that important? And is, is this talking about um, your brothers here? Or is this talking about uh, all our brothers and sisters online? I would say everybody. All right. And, uh, yeah, I'm trying to not get distracted here. Um, why, why Why? would we do that? Uh, because there are, one, there are a brother, and it probably could be like, uh, like your brothers of Yashrael, because like Yahushua said, they are my brothers and sisters. And yeah, and that's what, what Messiah Yahushua said. Yahushua you know, does the will of Yahuwah. Right, yeah. and who the will of Yahuwah is the complete point. And so if we are in the will of Yah, if we are doing his Torah, that means everybody who is a Torah keeper is our brother or sister, right? It doesn't matter who it is. Now, does that make the guy that just commented on our video a little bit ago, he says, I slaughter swine and I eat it. I love eating pig. Is that our brother? No, it sounds like a Gentile. It's like someone outside it sounds of like a child. Gentile, but it could still be a brother. It's, it's still be a brother. It's still a child of Yah. It's still a creation of Yah. So they should be treated equally with a fair chance as well, even if they are sitting there blaspheming the name of Yahuwah, saying, I eat pork and I cook the grease up or whatever it is they said. Yeah, we, there ha the message has to be delivered. And it, we're not always going to get a good reception when we're trying to deliver the message. And that's why we, all of us, especially me, over the years, I've gotten much better at being um, nicer. I, I used to pop off all the time, you know, and, I'd, you know, people are like, oh, I, I love my pig. And then I'm like, oh, fine, whatever. Um but you just have to get the message through. That's all our job is, is to get our message through. It's like Yahushua just said, if they don't receive you, just shake the dust off your foot and it's on them at this y point. Yeah, move on. Exactly. Okay, here's the next one. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. What is this all about? This is, if you see your neighbor in some sort of sin, something that you know is very like vile, something that is should not be done, then uh, you are going to want to get him out of it so that you do not partake in the sin. Because it's, it's obviously a sin big enough that it would cause the entire Yasharel to get cursed. Right. And so those would be things like um, you notice your neighbor has a young child and it's not his child and, and there's there's bad things going on, right? You would you would need to stop that. You would probably need to you know stop in there and save that child, whatever you did. But you would definitely need to rebuke your neighbor. Um, and that way you're not found guilty of that sin because if you see it and don't say anything to him then the guy the guy may not know he's sinning if you see something do something nicole Jaden had a revelation that leviticus 5 yeah. might be pertaining to that and that's one i think we're gonna have a special edition on what maybe or maybe a special edition now what, what do we have with leviticus 5 all right so it says in the first verse and when a being sins in that he has heard the voice of swearing or is a witness or has seen or has known but does not reveal it, he shall bear his wickedness. Okay, yeah, so that is exactly right. And so Jade came up with that the other day. We've been having some issues with Leviticus 5 because I, there was commandments in there, but we could not place them. But as we are getting more veteranized into writing these commandments down, I think that we're finding a place for them. So I think we'll go through Leviticus 5 today as ourselves, and then we will um, add these where it needs to go, and then we'll do a, a video just on that. 
Okay, um, so yeah, that is a good thing. Uh, 72. 72. 72. Love your not with each other's brothers? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not? So you guys don't love your brothers as yourself? Not always. How does uh, that fit no. into the Torah? It doesn't. It's uh, wickedness. It's wickedness. So how, how do we fix this? Uh, stop being evil. So what, what is the de- what is how, how are you guys evil to each other? What does that mean? Uh, it's it's more like arguments. Arguments and picking on each other. Picking, right? It's like one guy does one thing. It escalates, right? There's an escalation of... Uh, of uh, it might just be an escalation of boredom of something of the sort because the longer you guys are at a certain project, I will notice that you guys get bored and you guys will pick back and forth, but it, it advances. And so it is, we're always um, on the chopping block ourselves as we go through these commandments. We're always trying to dial our own lives in to, to something better. All right. Do not uh, diverse your cattle. That means basically don't breed them, you know, like a Holstein and a, a, a Brahma. You wouldn't probably want to breed those. Um, in Yah's land. Do not mingle your seed. Um, yeah, this, that, what is that, Kate? Uh, mingling your seed would be throwing out like some form of like you throw apple seeds and you throw orange seeds in the same field. You didn't want to do that. Or, or like um, the Japanese people, I believe back in the day, they would take all these seeds and put them in there and they just throw all the seeds out of all, like a whole bunch of different stuff and it would grow up all sorts of different stuff. So Yah says don't do that. And why, why is that? We found out. Uh, because it mixes uh, the uh, nutrients, because the bees would pollinate, and it would mix one one p- part of the seed with another part of the seed, and you would get mixed fruits. And I think that was like harmful. It's like mixing wool and linen, and it would do a harmful thing to you. Yeah, and that's the next one. Do not mix do not m- mix linen and wool, um, which is a frequency thing, which will have you vibrating off the roof. And so um, it's something not good for humans. But it's yet another thing that our, we wouldn't know. Our, we would not know this unless our creator had spent the time back in the day to say, hey, don't do this. All right, uh, 76, do not lie with a tanked woman. That should be very obvious. Um, do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. That's okay. the world these days. Yeah, everybody, everybody. They like a clean-shaven face for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, Nicole, do you like clean-shaven faces? No, I used to. You used to? Um, you're okay with me? Yeah. That's good. All right. All right, so uh, do not cut yourself for the dead. That seems obvious. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. That seems that, very... That should be obvious. A very obvious thing. Yeah, do not defile your temple. Um, do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measurements. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. You shall stone the wizards and mediums. Now, this is one that we put into this, and this is like a commandment that... If you end up trying to keep this, you'll end up in prison. You'll end up, you, I mean, we're in, the, we're in the wrong time. A lot of these are for the land. This is for the land. If we want to, if we are taken back to Yisrael, if we have, we're set up on Mount Zion, this is where, how it would be there, right? We would not allow wizards. We would not allow mediums. And we would, we would kill them. As vicious as that sounds, um, evil has to be taken out of the land. And whether or not they die, is, is that's, that's up to them. Right, feast of first fruits, Shavuot and the Omer count. We must keep that. And so there's that's one we got the other day, I believe, like two days ago. Yep. And the feast of trumpets. Oh, something just went crazy here. Where it is? Feast of trumpets. Yon Torah. We got to keep that. We keep the feast of the coat, and we also um, if you blast me the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. Now, again, this is one of these commands that if you see somebody out there, I mean, like I, like I mentioned before, all the Hollywood should be blown off the map. But if you, if in the, in the land, this is what it was. If you hear somebody, you know, cursing our creator, you got to pick up the rocks. Okay. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another one. And 94 is repay injury for injury. All right. So these are 94 commandments so far. We are almost out of the book of Leviticus. Right, and then we have numbers and Deuteronomy left, and Deuteronomy is essentially recategorizing all of this. It'll just—it's a recap of everything. It's like he um, basically just remember this stuff and go from there. All right. So as I go out to my handy dandy split screen, gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Good, 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 good. The grand said something about. What's the grand say? So the grand. A video that somebody else did. I don't see that, but as you, I'm going to my handy dandy stuff. You guys look for that. <laughs> All right, so we are on Leviticus 25. It's called the Sabbath year, and um, you guys will have to run that. Okay, so this is the Sabbath year. Let's begin. Leviticus 25. And Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael and say unto them, 
when ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Shabbat unto Yahuwah. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather in the fruit thereof. Okay, so this is again one of these commands. Do we add this command or do we not? Well, here he says that when you come into the land, well, uh, most people aren't in the land anymore. But it says when you come into the land. So, so we should put it in there as like when we stone the withers and mediums. Right. And so would this would this still apply to us today? Would we? Yeah, if we make it back to Yeshua, I would say probably, yeah. You what, hap what happens though? Here, here we are in the land that we are in right now, right? We're in the middle of, of South America. Yah has provided this land. There, none of none of anything that I have has anything to do with my own sweat. This has a hundred and thousand percent to do with Yah's blessings, and that He put us in this land. Now, if we are on the correct schedule, would we keep the would we keep the land of Shabbat? Absolutely, I, I would think so. I would think so. Okay, because there's blessings with that, and there's also other things as well. Because um, you don't basically you have three years without food coming up. Okay, so Nicole, are you going to be adding this in? Yep. Okay, did you already add that in? Nope. Yeah, you, just, you can still respond. You can get it in. It's fine. All right, so four. But in the seventh year shall be a Shabbat of rest unto the land, a Shabbat for Yahuwah. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. Now, this is yet a more seventh, right? We've gone over the seven. Yah has seven days and you have a Shabbat. You have seven hooks and levers and seven of this. You have your unclaimed for seven days. Um, you know, the, the lepers have to go outside of the, of the um, camps for seven days. Everything is in, in parts of seven. So if we are dealing with sevens, and we this is the problem when we deal with a lunar cycle where we get outside of cycles of seven. If we are stopping and we are putting a new, new um, if basically we start a new month, is it a month? What are we starting here? It's like it starts a new year at like the First new moon or something, and then like, but, but some people do it every month. Some people do it like every month on a new moon to change it. So it'd be like you'll have a, a Shabbat on like a Friday or whatever, and then it'll end up on like a Tuesday. Yeah, so we know some Torah keepers that actually, I think, I don't know what it, it was last year, but this year they moved the Shabbat to a first day, um, and they believe that's the seventh day. But if we're dealing with sevens and fifties, and you're, you know, and that's the thing inside of scriptures, there's, there's no place. Inside of scriptures anywhere that it says in the year of Josephus, when the Sabbath was the fourth day of the of the week, there's there's not a single thing that ever says the days of Shabbat are ever moved. Right? That would add confusion. Our Creator is not about confusion. He's about getting people to the temple to um, read the you know spend time on the Shabbat and do that kind of stuff. Imagine a a year where only the priest knew what when the next Shabbat was going to be. Right? So imagine you're at the last Shabbat of the year. And you had to swap it to another day. You would have all these people that came on the wrong day. You'd be no, no, no. Sabbath has been changed to this. You'd have people coming at the wrong time. It would just, it would be a mess. And if and, you're if you're celebrating Shabbat on one day, right? Let's say let's just say it's on the actual Shabbat, and then you change it to the next year. Somehow you're going to miss a Shabbat. You're going to go out of seven. You're going to have like a Shabbat in either the middle of the week or a day after Shabbat. You're going to miss your actual Shabbat. You're going to work eight days instead. Yep, and you're missing what's going to be coming up. You're missing Jubilees, right? You're going to be off on days of Jubilees. You're going to be off on all the stuff, which is why we got to get the calendars completely right. All right. But in the seventh, did I do it before? Yes. Yeah, go for all right, five. That which grows of its own accord of your harvest, you shall not reap. Neither gather the grapes of your vine undressed, for it is a year of rest unto the land. Okay, so what does that say? So basically whatever grows up, if food grows up, you can't eat it. Just let it stay there. So in six six years, basically six years, you you that sixth year is like it's going to be, you have to get it for the seventh year and also the eighth because you're not going to, you're not going to have food, right? right you would you gotta, plant a year later. Well, to, we get into that later, how that right, works. Right, right, right. No, so that's what I'm saying. You, it's, it's got a blessed time. All right, so six. And the Shabbat of the land shall be food for you. Uh, food for you, for you, and for your servant, and for your maid, and for your hired servant, and for your stranger that sojourns with you. So this would be a lot of faith, right? Because if, if, if Yah was not dwelling with people, there's absolutely no way without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to be able to plant enough in one year for three. It's, it's not going to happen. So you're going to be blessed by this. And for your cattle, and for the beasts that are in your land, shall all the increase thereof be meat. All right, what does that say? 
What does that say? Be meat. Be meat. Oh, like crops are for food? Crops are for food. Um, and for thy cattle and for thy beasts that are in thy land shall all the increase thereof be meat. What does that mean? <laughs> the increase thereof be meat. Okay, this is and so, uh, and for your livestock and the beasts that are in your land, all its crops are for food. Okay. Uh, so basically, your livestock NIV. eat that. And I say, what's the nature? As well as for your livestock and wild animals in your land, whatever the land produces may be eaten. Okay, so does that mean you're able to kill the cows? On well, seventh year? Probably, right? I was saying so because they're not the land. They don't need the rest. It's the land that needs the rest. Right, so you're not going to have grains, but you would have meat. Right, right, and the cows wouldn't be pulling the plow, so you probably have to like get rid of a few of them because they're going to reproduce a lot of them. Right, and the cows are still going to be eating that ground, though, so that's yeah. interesting. All right, eight. And you shall number seven Shabbats of years unto you, seven times seven years, and the space of the seven Shabbats of years shall be unto you forty and nine years. Okay, so basically, what did, what did that just say? Seven times seven is what? Four, yeah, so basically, okay. like 49 years. 49 years. And this is what where a lot of uh, the Sabbath keepers, like the lunar Sabbath keepers, they get into this thing on, um, they, they, they bounce around right here. Okay, so nine. Then shall you cause the shofar of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month in Yom Kippur, Kippurim. Shall ye make the shofar sound throughout all your land? Okay, so that... Sounds like a command right there. Yeah, when it's, the, when it's the 50th year of the Jubilee, we are supposed to blow our shofars on, on, the, day on the Day of Atonement. Okay, so Nicole, do you have that one? I think 8, 9, and 10 all go together, don't they? Um, 8, 9, and 10. And you shall number, yep, 7 Shabbats. Yep, so that's about Jubilees. Yep, okay, and 10. And ye shall hollow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto you, the inhabitants thereof, it shall be a Jubilee unto you. And ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. Okay, so the Jubilees are very, very important times, right? It's, it's what happens in the Jubilee year? Uh, basically, everything is released. If you uh, have a servant, you're supposed to release him on the Jubilee. Yeah, we'll read into that. But it's, it's one of those things that we are in cycles of seven and fifties. And if you miss, if we get out of that sink, then we're, we're going to be out of sync. Okay, a Jubilee shall, shall that... Fiftieth year be unto you, ye shall not sow, neither reap that which grows of itself, nor gather the grapes of it, of your vine undressed. So there's two different jubil there's two different kind of like jubilees. There's a seventh year for the land of rest, and then there's a fifty year jubilee at which the same thing is happening here. All right, for it is the jubilee; it shall be holy unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. Basically, it's almost like a rest year. You're basically just gonna eat. You're basically gonna have some. You're have like a basically almost like a lazy. Year. I'm sure you're still gonna do work, but you're not gonna be going out to the field and going every day and just planting and sowing and fertilizing, and watering and everything. You're just gonna let it go, and you're basically just gonna eat your increase and yeah, live your life. And, yeah, and so you would still be. You would be on the. You would still be the seven. You would be on a a, a year of rest, and you would also be on a jubilee as well. And so it's a little bit different. All right, in the year of this jubilee, you shall return every man unto his possession. Okay, what does that mean? You shall return every man into his possession. So basically give him back his stuff. Um, what, is it, what does the NIV say? In the year of the Jubilee, everyone wants to return their own property to their own property. Okay, so what does that mean? Do you guys understand that? Uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't understand what that means exactly. Okay, so that is if you would have sold your house, basically, or you'd like, basically, I mean, you could sell that stuff, but it comes back to you, right? The houses never, ever go out of people's names. Um, unless you're in a city. In a city, that, that does change. I remember that the rules was change. But you would go back. Nicole, what do you got? So the Amplified Bible has like a little thing that says, which through poverty he was compelled to sell. So if he right. had to sell it during when he right. had no money, then they would give it back to him. Right. And so you had you had all these years, and you if you like ended up in debt and you had to sell your land, that land would come back to you. So whatever you sell does not completely sell. It's only being used for whatever time is left. And I think they got into that before where people were like four years before a Jubilee, they, you know, you wouldn't want to buy that land or something sort because you'd only have it for four years. And so you'd want to um, make sure your, your numbers and everything were right because you would only have it for four years and then it goes back to that guy's, which is cool, right? That means you'd never lose your house, right? Yah, Yah has his way that you would never, ever get evicted by your, by, you know, you would end up with it getting it back. Okay, 14. And if you sell aught unto your neighbor, or by aught of your neighbor's hand, ye shall not oppress one another. Um, so, and let's, let's read that out of the NIV. If you sell land to any of your own people or buy land from them, do not take advantage of each other. 
Um, I feel like that should be under a command. It's, just like, yeah, it's like the same like weights and measures and don't rip, repress your neighbor where you don't rip him off and take take his money, right? If the land is worth uh, it's a certain amount, you don't want to raise the price and somehow say, well, it's got this well here and this well here. I'm going to give it to you for like much more than it's worth. So. Right, right. So, Nicole, you got that one? Yeah. You I got think a place for just go under the same, under the Jubilee, right? Honor the Jubilee year. Um, yeah, I guess that, w that would be it. I mean, yeah, so that's, that's probably right. Okay, 15. According to the number of years after the Jubilee, you shall buy of your neighbor... And according unto the number of years of the fruits, he shall sell unto you. Um, anyone have an idea what that says, Jade? So according to the number of years after the Yobel, it, you buy from your neighbor. And according to the number of years of your crops, he sells you. So unto the, yeah, so that's basically it. How many, how many years do you have left? Mm -hmm. Or vice versa. And it goes down more. It explains it more. So instead of selling like you know, a, a full title to a land, you're only selling the, you would get the crops of this land, which for the right guy, if, I mean, if you're a big farmer and you have all these people and this guy just went into debt, I mean, you, you, you pay a guy a little bit for the four years you have left and you could reap a, quite a bit of money off of his land, especially if it's good land. All right. According to the multitude of years, you shall increase the price thereof. And according to the fewness of years, you shall diminish the price of it. For according to the number of years of the fruits he sells unto you. So that's just basically, you guys understand mm -hmm. that? Like basically if there's more, if there's more years where you can grow more crops, the it, price goes up, but if there, right. the price goes up. But if there's like, say two years, the price is going to go down because you can't get that many crops out of it. Right. Plus whatever good you do to that land. I mean, when you return it, I don't, I don't know what state you'd return it to. I'd hope you return it. I think well, it'd be better, so, right? It'd be more flourishing and more. So well, you'd have the nutrients that gone out of it. So basically, you're just kind of renting it for seven years. Yeah, that's that's all it is. You're basically it's a uh, it's. I mean, that, so the guy who the renting he doesn't get any money back. Well, this is still this is fifty years, right? Are we doing fifty or sevens? Because this was this was on a jubilee, so this was the first fifty. Yeah, so you're dealing with fifties. So you would everything would be in fifties, and, and you know that's a long time. I mean, some people don't. I mean, a lot of people these days don't live two jubilees, um, but that's the the calendar of our creator. So. Uh, where are we at here? 16, 17? 17. All right. You shall not therefore oppress one another, but ye shall fear your Elohim, for I am Yahuwah Elohim. Again, there's that you shall not oppress one another, take care of your neighbor, don't rip them off, all, all that kind of stuff. Our, our creator cares about everybody out there. Okay, 18. Wherefore ye shall do my statutes and guard my judgments and do them and ye shall dwell in the land in safety. Okay, we we have that over and over and over, right? Guard my commands. Yeah, guard my commands. So, Nicole, you know where that one's at? Yep. All right. And the land shall yield her fruit and ye shall eat your fill and dwell therein in safety. And if ye say, if ye shall say, what shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow nor gather in our increase. And that would that would be the first thing people would say. Well, um how are uh, how are we going to eat? Right. Well, this tells us how we're going to eat because um, 21. Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. So, guys, if you're on the right calendar and you're in the land, you should be able to that that six years is a, is a humdinger. Right. It's a big one. Right. You're going to get way more than whatever you had. And Yah's going to bless it. I don't even know if you need fertilizer that year because your crops are going to be coming flying up. Right? Some old guy says shalom. Hey, old guy, how you doing, buddy? Some old, guy. some old guy. How you doing, some old guy? Much love to everybody out there and who's in the here listening in. We love you all. We appreciate you. All right, 22. And ye shall sow the eighth year and eat yet of old fruit until the ninth year. Until her fruits come in, ye shall eat of the old store. Okay, so hold on. We have six years and we get a lot on the sixth year. And we get three the years. The seventh worth of year. We can't do anything. Mm -hmm. The eighth, eighth year, we're starting to grow our crops. Why would we need this on the ninth year? Because probably the crops will be ready. Um, you eat the old fruit, yeah, probably until the beginning of the ninth year. It's the year. same Yah has uh, the uh, widows and the poor taken care of. He knows that if we're obeying his laws, he's going to give us enough food to last us for another three years when we're obeying his laws. He's going to give us plenty of increase. Yeah, so what would you be doing if you were a farmer and that's all you ever knew? And you were, you were year six, you would basically have a vacation for yeah. years. Okay, find no hobby. Go hibernate for an entire year. Yeah, no, do something else. You know, don't waste and that I time. I think actually they said there's things that I read before that during those years, the farmers would go find other things to do, other jobs. Like they'd become a construction worker and mm. they'd go help build. Aha, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, go build some stuff. Okay, the land, 23, the land shall not be sold forever. 
for the land is mine, for ye are strangers and sojourners with me. And that, that is amazing, right? Yah delivered the land. He gave everything. And it's these people's stuff. They, they, the inheritance that our creator had is, is amazing. All right. 24. And in all the land of your possession, ye shall grant a redemption for the land. If your brother be waxed poor and has sold away some of his possession, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which is his brother sold. Okay. Do you guys understand what that says? Yeah. So basically... If the person that sold it originally, right, the person that sold it out of poverty, sold that to him, but he still had the money to go come redeem it, buy it back. If his brother wants to buy it back for him, he is allowed to redeem it and buy it back with his money. Right, and that, that's amazing as well, right? So there's, your, yeah, I mean, it, even if you sell it, there's still a chance you can get it back, and it's not going to make that farmer real happy. Because you, you, you aren't buying it because you want to, just, you aren't selling it because you just want to sell it. You're selling it because you have no other right. options. You're basically poor. Need the money for whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, the only option left is sell yourself into slavery, I suppose, or, or break Torah and, and steal or something. Okay, 26. And if the man have not none to redeem it and himself be able to redeem it, then let him count the years of the sale thereof and restore the overplus unto the man to whom he sold it, that he may return unto his possession. Okay, so what's that say there? Then let him count the years since it since its sale and return the remainder to the man of to whom he sold it. It shall be his to return to. Okay, what does that say? So I'm thinking that says like uh, you gotta like so whatever years left like you gotta like figure out the math on that and you gotta, each year it costs a certain. So amount. here 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 would be a problem, right? So say I'm a farmer and you went into poverty, Jade. I went and bought your farm. Say it's year forty six or something or something of the sort, right? So you sell this to me on the year 46. I go through it and bring all my, my servants in and I crush the whole yard, the whole land, bring up all these crops. And in the middle of the crops that are coming up, the brother comes and redeems this, right? So there's a problem right there because the, the guy that just bought it, he has invested all the seed. He's invested all the time. He has all the labor into that. And so there's going to be some sort of, uh, um, I mean, you you got to make this right. I don't, there has to be some sort of a, a contingency. And I think this is part of it, right? Because you're supposed to um, restore the overplus unto the man to whom he sold it. So if there's more to it, um, I, I think the way Yah has this is it has to be done right. Um, I do not know what would happen if you came and, and wanted to redeemed after you had just spent all that time into that. That was 28, right? That was 27. 27, okay. Yeah, 28. But if he be not able to restore it to him, then that which is sold shall remain in the hand of him that has bought it until the year of Jubilee. And in the Jubilee, it shall go out and he shall return unto his possession. And if a man sell a dwelling house in a walled city, then he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold. Within a full year, he may redeem it. Okay, so this is talking. This is something a little different, right? So it's this like is, an actual house. This is in talking city. Yeah, inside of Jerusalem or inside no of a land, city. Just probably a house. Just a house. Yep. And if it be not redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house that is in the walled city shall be established forever to him that bought it throughout his generations. It shall not go out in the jubilee. So basically, if you sold a house in the in the city, whatever you did in the city. If you did not buy it back within that year, right? If you were not able to redeem it, or your family wasn't able to redeem it for you, then that basically whoever you sold it to, that house is his forever. Yeah, and that's that's again, that's very interesting that that Yah separates land from something else. Um, is are we having audio issues? I just saw somebody with a message in there. Um, let's see here, and let's see. Should I go into the jubilee? So um, let's get into thirty-one. But the houses of the villages which have no wall round about them shall be counted as the fields of the county. Then they may be redeemed and they shall go out in the Jubilee. Is there any issues? So someone guy said, I've noticed when any talks about Yahuwah, the internet messes up. The enemy does not want, does not want the truth out. Yeah, that's probably true. It could also be our bad internet too. So I'm sure the enemy has something to do with all of this. Um, so hopefully you guys are catching this and um, hopefully it's not a waste of anyone's time. Um, and, uh, let's go into this. So I want to go back to that little point right there on, um, the house, right? So how, how would this work out? I mean, your land is returned to you. A house outside of a city is returned to you, but inside of a city, it does it, You have it, one year. Yeah. You one year. If you don't buy back in the year, then it becomes that person's forever. So it's like almost inside of a city. It's a different, a whole different kind it's of a rules. different kind of game. Yeah. Different kind of rules. All right. 
So 30... 31. 31. Okay. But the houses of the villages, which have no wall around about them, shall be counted as the fields of the county. They may be redeemed, and they shall go out in the Jubilee. So okay. houses without like a walled city, basically little like uh, houses in the middle of nowhere... If you sell it, and it basically is counted as land. It's counted as the same thing, and it can be returned to you in the Jubilee year. What's the difference between a walled city and a knot? I mean, why, why would one be returned and one not? I have no idea. Mine says an unwalled village. An unwalled village, right. So village versus city. I don't know if there's a difference. There, I mean, there's, there's obviously a difference to yeah, somehow. Yep. Okay, 32. Notwithstanding the cities of the Levium, and the houses of the cities of their possession, may the Levium redeem at any time. Okay, so what is that saying there? So the Levites can always redeem their houses inside the inside the cities. Okay, the Levites have always a right to redeem their houses. Okay, that's good to know. And if a man purchase of the Levium, then the house that was sold and the city of his possession shall go out in the year of the Jubilee, for the houses of the cities of the Levium are their possession among the children of Yashrael. Okay, so that makes sense, right? So it, the priests fall under yet another kind of uh, a category, right? Don't mess with the priests. The priests have a shot of getting their stuff back. But the fields of the suburbs of their cities may not be sold, for it is their perpetual possession. And if your brother be waxen poor and fallen and decay with you, then you shall relieve him, yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with you. Okay, what does that mean, decay? What did you guys say? Mine says, and when your brother has become poor and his, fa and his hand has failed with you. His hand has failed? His hand has failed with you. Then uh, you shall sustain him, and he shall live with you like a stranger or a sojourner. So basically, don't make him a slave. You just need to bring him in as one of your own. You need to bring him in basically just take care of him. If he can't, if he's so poor, he can't take care of himself at this point. So what kind of brother? So it's his fellow Israelites, and then there it says brother in this. So I think it's like family. I think he's an actual physical brother. You think it's a physical brother? I think so. Well, the NIV says if any of your fellow Israelites become poor and are able to support themselves among you, help them as you would a foreigner and stranger. So I don't think it's a brother like that. I think so it's, it's maybe it's like just a Israelite. Yeah. So you're supposed to try to help. You weren't supposed people. to enslave the Israelites. You weren't supposed to make them like like slaves. Slaves. Right. Right. Okay. So thirty six. Take no usury of him or increase, but fear your Elohim that your brother may live with you. Uh, take so, no interest from right, him. So yeah. take no interest. That is a that is a command, right? Uh, yep. So you're not supposed to take any um, any any profit off of people like like family, off like Israelites. Yeah. yeah, Israelites, and so the, your brothers. Shalom to Sylvia. Shalom to Sylvia. Sylvia is here. Yep. Hey, Sylvia, how you doing? Hope you're good. Hope you guys are all good out there. Much love to you all. Okay, thirty seven. You shall not give him your money upon usury, nor lend him your victuals for increase. All right, what, what's going down? Do not lend him your silver on interest, and do not lend him your food for profit. So basically, you just really need to take care of him. Don't sit there and try, try to make, and make money off this dude. What happens if they can't pay you back? That's not that's not what, you're, what it was meant for you. Who has said, revere him, don't, don't expect the payback. Okay, thank you. Okay, 38. I am Yahuwah Eloheikim which brought you forth out of the land of Mitzrayim to give you the land of Canaan and to be your Elohim. And if your brother that dwells by you be waxen poor and be sold unto you, you shall not compel him to serve as a bond servant. Okay, so what is that saying right there? So it says don't make him a slave. If he if he wants to to make money, he wants to become a slave, do not let him become a slave. And the next verse says what, what he can become. Okay, but as a hired servant and as a sojourner, he shall be with you. And shall serve you until the year of Jubilee. So how is that different than being a slave? Uh, slaves didn't get paid. Slaves he got was... paid for He's an employee. He's more of an employee than a slave. Are you guys slaves? No, we get paid, technically. What do you, what do you get paid? Food? Food, yeah. Lodging? Food. Three hots and a cot? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so you're not. You're supposed to basically take him in as a hired worker, right? What does that do for that? What does that do for your brother? Not only does it make him like it gives him money to provide for himself because he's working for you, but he's also you're also not like... Basically, he's not a slave. He's not lower than you. He's equal exactly. with yeah, you. Yeah, lower. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, you're not. You're not. Um, you're not making him just a, a nobody, right? If you if you you do a you're, uh, you're keeping his esteem and keeping his honor. You're not making him humble himself yeah, before you exactly. to, be, to be your slave because he couldn't afford right. for himself. You're taking care of your brother. As when Yahuwah says, "I am Yahuwah," he means it. It's obviously when he says it after that. He says, "I am Yahuwah." Brought you out of Mitzrayim. He's like, "I will put you back in Mitzrayim. I took you out of there. You need to take care of your brothers. I'm taking care of you." Yeah, absolutely. There's not a single person in the world that ever wakes up. And goes, man, today I should live in poverty. 
Today, I should absolutely strive to go to poverty. Let's see how bad I can actually make this, right? So when you are in poverty, that you are at, you are at the end, right? You're at the dire straits. You do not mean to be there. And I've said this before, but it, it only, it, anybody can make it to the side of the road of the cardboard box, right? It doesn't matter how good of a life we have it. At the end, um, if we mess with the Elohim, if we mess with, with Yahuwah, he can put us back and, um, you know, we have to be thankful. It doesn't matter how bad we have it. It is way better than what it could be. Ori Pup is here. Too. Ori Pup, how you doing, buddy? Our the brother, our brother Ori. The grand thought your three hots and a cot were funny. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Um, forty-one. Forty-one. Mm. It's forty, right? Forty or forty-one? No, it's forty-one. Forty-one. Okay. All right, Eli, you're a little behind, buddy. Okay, and then shall he depart from you, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family and unto the possession of his fathers, shall he return. Now, this is different than being a slave, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, if you end up with a slave and they had a family, then what? They, you get to choose. Because you give them the family, then you get to choose. If you keep the, the kids and the uh, wife, or if he brought them, then he gets to keep them. Right. But we, I think the point of this is not to enslave Yah's people. Right? Yeah, no one is supposed to be lesser than another. Everyone is supposed to be taken care of equally. Absolutely, yeah. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Mitzrayim. They shall not be sold as a bondsman. You shall not rule over him with rigor, but shall fear your Elohim. Okay, what does that mean? Mine says do not rule over him with harshness. So basically, don't be a ruthless, like... Slave driver. But what it says, why Why would we fear Elohim? Why would we fear Yah? Because he can, because if we're sitting there uh, just um, ruling them with harshness, if we are ruthless to our brother who we're supposed to be just a hired servant, then Yahuwah can do the same to us. I mean, he can strike us down any moment. That's why he says, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. He says, you're supposed to revere me because he's going, he can do the same to you. He can make you a slave. He can make you like Nebuchadnezzar and eat grass for seven years. Yeah, I remember the parable of Messiah Yahushua, right? Where we had the uh, the one slave guy and he went to the boss and, you know, he, he owed all this money. And then he uh, the boss is like, hey, you know what? You're forgiven. And then somebody else owed that slave money and the guy beat him up and sent him to jail. And then the, uh, the slave master went and, and took care of business because of, he was an evil slave. Okay, 44. Both your bondsmen... And your bondsmaids, which ye shall have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondsmen and bondsmaids. So basically says you have slaves from the Gentiles, not your own people. Oh, that's interesting. Does this apply to us today? I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty sure slavery is pretty much done with, is abolished at this point. Not but, according to Yah. Yeah, but like nowadays, there's you can't go and slave someone. That's just that's going to end you up in several years of prison. Have you guys seen a mask on people? That looks like slavery to me. That looks like complete slavery. I believe that the, these people that came and they put they, they made us all slaves these days. Okay, 45. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them ye shall buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. Okay, anyone have anything for that? So basically anybody like the strangers that came in with you guys, they were basically allowed to buy for, as slaves are allowed to buy as people. And that was probably because they probably were not rich like the Yashalites were. They still had to be taken care of. So if they were just workers living under someone else's house, that was probably good enough for them as they were probably like immigrants, very poor, very... Uh, but don't you guys see some, anything wrong with the whole slavery thing? I'm not saying Yah's ways are wrong by any means. I but he has set up a system that you actually buy and sell slaves. I don't see it as something uh, as like we have now, right? Where you buy a slave and you're like you're like whipping them. I see it as more of almost like a family style thing where like here's your job for the day and you go do it and they eat with you, they live with you. It's almost like a family thing. It's not as a slavery thing where like you're sitting there beating your slave and ruthless to them. That would be the ideal slave master, I'm sure. And that's but why he says here, don't rule them with harshness. Don't rule any slave with harshness. They were supposed to be revered as people as well. They were both basically supposed to just be taken care of, but in return, they work for you. They do work with you, alongside you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Let's do 40, 45, 46. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondsmen forever, but over your brethren, the children of Yashrael, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. Okay? So, I mean, there, there's there's a lot of stuff. I mean, this is... I mean, are you getting any commands out of this, Nicole? Like, uh, I mean, there's, there's some stuff here. I mean... Like we're not supposed to uh, enslave our brethren, enslave our brethren, and we're not supposed to rule people with evil, right? We're right. we're supposed to be nice, and and uh, you know we don't need to be evil people. There's no reason to be. 
it seems strange to have a slave because we, we grew up with knowing that slave drivers are evil people that they beat their slaves. But back then, it was, I don't think it was like that. It wasn't like where they were all wicked people. They were supposed to all have to be taken care of with niceness and kindness as one another was supposed to like, as their brother was supposed to take care of one. Uh, you would think so, but I don't think that's the way that the world has worked with slavery. I mean, you can see the Egyptians, right? And the yeah, Egyptians the Egyptians, think that's, that's, that's what the, it was. Everyone else grew up with like, Slaves, where everyone knew that slave masters were like beating their slaves, they knew that they were wicked people. And you know, I was like, no, if you want, if, if you want slaves, then you're gonna take care of them nicely. You're gonna treat them as a actual human being. Yeah, no, I, I just, I find it very weird that we have the capability of owning another human being. I just, I just can't get that through my, uh, I, I can't get through my system. Okay, forty-seven. Um, and if a sojourner or stranger wax rich by you, and your brother that dwells by him wax poor. And sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by you or to the stock of a stranger's family. Okay, so hold on here. So what are we talking about here? We have somebody, a stranger. So if there's a stranger that is rich, right, and your brother and a Yashraelite was poor and sells himself to the stranger that is rich. So you're selling yourself to the heathens. You're yeah. selling yourself to the Gentiles. Okay. After that he is sold, he may re be redeemed again. One of his brethren may redeem him. That's assuming that these guys play under the same rules. I mean... If it's, if it's a stranger, um, and a stranger is in on this, then, um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how this goes. But maybe we can get everyone to pay attention here. Um, so, what do we got here? 48? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. So, what did the grand say, by the way? She says, it's like the multiple wives thing. Abba doesn't condone it, but has a definite rule on how we treat each other. So, I don't know if condone. I, I know that's the right. I know we all are going to that place where... Uh, probably as human beings, we don't condone it, but I don't think Yah has uh, spoken against it. I still, I still don't think that is the correct word, um, dear Granny. All right, um, either his uncle or his uncle's sons, forty nine, may redeem him, or any of that is nigh of kin unto him of his family may redeem him, or if he is able, he may redeem himself. Okay, so basically saying your family members, assuming the stranger is willing to let this guy go. But I mean, that's the thing. Once you sell yourself into slavery and it's not under Yah's rules and you're not under a jubilee or something. Um, it could go wrong. You, could yeah, I mean, they, they could just say, hey, once bought, it's bought. And, it's, you know, it's the way it is. So. I feel like uh, that's where uh, the Yashalites would go destroy the enemy when they would take their brother in or something for a slave. They wouldn't redeem another rule. Maybe, maybe. But I mean, you, you, are, you've, you have... Um, voluntarily sold yourself into slavery at this point is what it sounds like. All right, 50. I don't have answers for a lot of this. And he shall reckon with him that bought him from the year that he was sold to him until the year of Jubilee. And the price of his sale shall be according to unto the number of years, according to the time of a hired servant shall it be with him. Okay, is this still talking about... I think this is seven years. This is seven years? Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure that we have this here. We're talking about a sojourner here. I feel like 50 years, someone's already going to be really old with a slave by then. 50 years. Just a this long is time. The year of the Jubilee. Year of the Jubilee. Jubilee 50 years. So. 50. Huh. Um, and are we sure we're not at sevens? Seven years? Seven. Okay, so I'm thinking this isn't, and this is all inside the land because you had a lot of other people that were mixed multitudes inside of Israel and they came out of Egypt. There are a lot of other people that left. Yeah, them. but they shouldn't be in the land. They should right, be. But they, but they decided to become part of Israel and follow the commands. And, but they were still like from Moab or whatever. And so they were following the laws, so they sold themselves to someone inside of Yashrael, so they would still be following the laws. So I don't think you would sell yourself to outside of Yashrael. Yeah, I, I don't think it would work out well because they're, they are talking about redeeming people, and I, it seems like they're playing under the same set of rules. So I think it's all like if you have like the sojourners, like the people that like came from other nations and they wanted to be Yashrael, then they would sell them to the people inside of Yashrael, but I don't think you'd sell yourself outside of that area. Yeah, it'd be a bad news. I mean, sell yourself to like some foreigners, it could be gone. Okay, um, the grand has no answers for anything either, so we're all we're all questioning things here. All right, so fifty one. Mm -hmm. uh, if there be yet any many more years behind, according unto them, he shall give again the price of his redemption out of the money that he was bought for. Okay, this is redeeming slaves. Okay, and if there remain but few years unto the year of jubilee. And he shall count with him, and according unto his years shall he give him again the price of his redemption. Again, how to make it fair to end your slavery. All right, what did it cost? What was the cost of redemption? What did they, what did they charge, I wonder? I don't know. It'd probably be whatever the price of the slave was. Um, and, and then the time of war. How many years he served, they took off that and basically just gave the rest of the silver what was left. 
Yeah, this could get into some sticky situations, I would imagine. Probably pretty expensive. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what slave costs. Okay, and as a yearly hired servant shall he be with you, with him. He be with him. Let me read that again. And as a yearly hired servant shall he be with him, and the other shall not rule with rigor over him in your sight. And if he be not redeemed in these years, then he shall go out in the year of Jubilee, both he and his children with him. Okay, so this is the Jubilee is the slaves are free. All right, for unto me the children of Yashrael are servants. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Mitzrayim. I am Yahuwah Elohim. All right, gentlemen, that takes us to the very end of this. And um, I guess everybody out there, if you guys are hanging with us, we really, really, really appreciate it. Um, gentlemen, what do you guys have? Today is a Shabbat. Are you guys, have you guys got any rest yet? Uh, kind of. We haven't done any work, so yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah, well, yeah, we haven't worked, but you guys haven't got a nap in or anything of the sort. Not so. yet. Okay. Um, anything else? Nicole, the muffins went well today? Yes, everybody, everybody happy with the muffins? muffins? Yeah, I think the muffins are pretty much gone. Yeah, the muffins uh -huh. went fast, very quick. These guys eat a tremendous amount. The grand uh, says, are we not all slaves to the master? We are actually, you know, that's not actually slaves. You know, I, this, servants. This is not, this is what I would, what I say. I was actually thinking about this the other day, the grand, um, is that we are voluntarily entering into what we, it wouldn't even be slavery, right? Everything, that's the, our creator has given us a free will. Right, we don't have to do anything that we do not want to do, but we should do what we should be doing because if we don't, then our souls are in danger. So we are voluntarily enslaving ourselves to the greatest master that could, we could ever have. Right, there is no greater master than Yah, and um, you know you could see that because he brought it, he gave us a son, he gave us a Torah, he gave us the the ways forward. And he gave us right statutes. He gave us right judgments. And so, yeah, it, I guess it, in fact we are kind of slaves, but we are voluntarily enslaving ourselves to the, the righteous master. And this is not a, you know, when our master doesn't want us to beating up other slaves, or he wants you to take care of your neighbors, he wants you not to oppress them. I mean, our master has qualities that most most slave people wouldn't have, right? So if you're a slave master, you're, you're going to have to beat the slaves probably to get them to work. Um, or not, uh, maybe you can just give them free food or something and they, they would do it. But our master would never do that to us, right? We are, we are free to enter into the Shemaim or we're free to enter into Shoal and it is all up to us. And that is why the world is at a, such a crossroads is because that we, we can choose. And the majority of the world has chosen not to serve Yah. And you, there's just, there's the very, very few people and you, you know, you can see it on this channel. And I know there's other channels that are that are really large. They have like 20, 30,000 people on there and they, they get a lot of views. But I don't see a world that is serving Yah. I don't see a people that is celebrating serving Yah. And there's no better place to be than right here. There's no better place to be than in the, the hands of our master who wants us to have the best life possible under his ways, under his conditions. So, um, yeah. All right. Anyone else have anything? Um, no, today's a rest day, so you guys should definitely be resting, and uh, hope, you guys re hope you guys are prepared for it. Yep. And Ori Pop, um, blessings are curses. Yeah, our choice. Exactly. Yeah, we, and that, that is it, right? And, and the blessings, I you know, you would have to be, I don't want to say a fool, but you would have to be a fool to get not want the, the blessings of Yah. Um, because the curses come in so many different ways. The curses come simply by not keeping the Torah and what you fall into because you fall into the traps. The, the, the Torah is a, a way that we do not fall in these traps, that we are not caught up into the hands of Hasatan, that we know right from wrong and that we can try to stay clean. We can try to stay holy. We can try to stay where our creator wants us to be. All right. Well, I guess that is it. Shabbat shalom to everybody out there. Boys, you guys are all right? Yeah. Right, yeah. Nicole, you good? I'm good. Okay. Well, I guess that is it. Um, much love to everybody out there. We truly appreciate you guys that are out there. Huge hugs out from Boss Clan. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow morning. And uh, much love. Have a all right. day. Yeah. Bye, bye the grand. Bye, all everybody. Right. Shabbat shalom. Shalom, shalom everybody.